distance? I'm calling Standard Metals, Cleveland, Ohio. That's right, Alabama Tech. He's a student there. Uh, speak to Moose River, please. Uh, Miss Rose Gagne. This is WY52240. I'm calling Miami, 832699. Texas, Texas. Tomahawk, Wisconsin. Cairo, Egypt. And so it happens. On top of 130 million local calls, a continuous stream of long distance calls, a million times a day. Highways of the voice, they sometimes call this great communication system, and the name's appropriate. For over and under this fair land of ours stretches a myriad of wires and cables. Often the cables lie hidden beneath the ground or parallel main highways or follow routes so little traveled that only the telephone engineers can truly chart their course. And yet, seen or unseen, they are always there. Appearing in unexpected places where the telephone poles march across the desert. Then vanishing to follow unseen paths, quite possibly amidst the grandeur of the Rockies or the high Sierras. Finally, they one and all wind up to link more than 70,000 communities from coast to coast into one vast network of communication. Yes, and beyond all that, to link the United States with all the other important countries of the world. Thus, within the cycle of a few swift minutes, America can talk with almost anyone who has a telephone, whether in Rio, Paris, Shanghai, or the islands of the sea. Picture, if you will, a city the size of Washington, D.C., inhabited only by telephone people. There'd be more than 600,000 of these people, and imagine every one of them, every single one, employed by the Bell system. And now, spread these people clear across the country, as they actually are. Some of them in remote places, plowing cables underground. Others restoring service when it is interrupted by outrageous freaks of nature. Others conducting exhaustive experiments to keep on improving telephone service. Others engaged in manufacturing, supply, and installation. Still others connecting in swift succession one telephone with another. No small task to link 70,000 communities by telephone. Yet it's being done with thousands and thousands of them every day. And here in brief is the basic plan. First, for the handling of long distance service, the United States is divided into eight regions, serving as regional center in the east, New York. The seven other regional centers, Chicago, Atlanta, Dallas, St. Louis, Denver, Los Angeles, San Francisco. Now then, to provide the basic network, each of these regional centers is joined to each of the other centers by direct circuits. As the next step, each regional center is linked by more direct circuits to scores of other cities. Next, from the larger of these places, still more direct circuits to a host of other cities, towns, and villages. Finally, connecting links with all the other communities served by the various independent telephone companies. These independent companies, to the number of approximately 6,000, are neither owned nor controlled by the Bell system. Yet they are all tied in with its nationwide long distance network. Now a glance at a New York long distance switchboard for a quick impression of what this network means in terms of nationwide service. There goes a call to Chicago. 
And now, Los Angeles, Washington, Miami, Dallas, Portland, and so on all through the day and night. For here, within easy reach, are direct wires to more than 300 cities. And any one of them can be joined with New York in instant communication. Incidentally, don't forget that every one of these calls has to be accurately timed for that's the only way the exact fare charge to the customer can be measured. On a station-to-station -station call, for example, when the called telephone answers, the operator inserts a ticket and registers the starting time in an automatic clock. When the conversation is finished, a lamp lights and once more the operator inserts the ticket and pulls a lever. And here, on the back of the ticket, is a precise record of the time. 